कल्पत रोगे विचार पति का नाम पावने भयो वैष्णव भयो नमो नमः सो वी आर वेलकमिंग ऑल द वैष्णवस फॉर दिस वंडरफुल सीरीज क्लासेस ऑन श्रीमद् भागवत गीता इन दिस मंथ ऑफ दिसंबर um and we're supremely grateful to him and jagannath prabhu for um for wonderfully wonderfully elaborating i was able to attend some part of it um so we will let me share my screen we will start with chapter 16 let me share my screen that is my screen i think there is only one screen Can you see my screen? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. You see PowerPoint? Yes, Gnana Yoga. Yep. Okay, good. That's good. So, uh, I just want to build a context. It's uh, again, time is very limited, so we probably have to move fast. I mean, I'm not sure. I notice also I have to move fast uh, in forty minutes. uh we're trying to capture the essence of this chapter 16 so this within the section of gyan yoga so these are chapter 13 to 18 um oh my mouse my keyboard is not working let's see okay so chapter 13 the name was nature the enjoyer and consciousness mm -hmm. and arjuna asked questions to lord to the lord uh six topics the kshetra kshetra gya prakriti gyana gyanam uh and then lord answered beautifully and in chapter 13 ended with lord explained in 1322 that this living entity is going through the repeated birth and death because of the association of three modes of nature lord didn't talk about three modes of nature in chapter 13 but that's how chapter 14 started the three modes of nature because chapter 13 ended with that three modes of nature chapter 14 is brilliantly explains uh, how these three modes of nature nature works uh, what are they how do they work how they bind the living entity and how krishna consciousness will allow someone to go beyond the three modes the word used was gunatita uh, uh, the one who can transcend the three modes but again that chapter didn't talk about how to transcend the three modes that's where chapter 15 started the yoga the supreme person i am going to prove elaborately uh, shared with all of us how this um, metaphor of upside banyan tree upside down banyan tree is explained and the whole process of the yoga system how you transcend how you detach yourself by the acts of detachment you cut that tree um and then in this chapter it didn't mention something very clearly because tree generally has branches the twigs and and the leaves that it mentioned very clearly but it did not mention a whole lot on the fruits of the tree there is one word that fruits of the tree is the dharmartha kama moksha in this chapter 15 but then in chapter 16 our acharya explains uh, the fruits the two fruits of this tree uh, the the divine and the demonic natures these are the two fruits of this tree that upside down tree that's mentioned in chapter 15 so now we are on chapter 16 the name is the divine and demonic natures so it has four sections section 1 has daivi sampada divine qualities again remember the name of the chapter we all want to keep the chapter name in our mind chapter name is the divine and demon demonic natures natures of who the the living entity uh, so the divine nature here correspond to daivi sampada the divine qualities 
of the divine, of the devotee uh, person, living entity. And the demonic nature corresponds to this section called Asura Sampada, demonic qualities. Um, and then the third section is the activities of the demonic people and the conscious consequences. And then the fourth section is giving up demonic tendencies and following scripture. So there's 24 verses, um, four sections. Um, clearly, they are they're lined up nicely. Um, and then the first section, we'll speak a little bit about this section, and then we'll jump into the sections. The first section, Daivi Sampadaya Divine Qualities, has almost um, what, 26 qualities, um, or divine qualities, qualities that those belong to the devotees. Uh, but they're in three verses, verse number one to three. So three verses, uh, Lord Krishna starts with, the, the verse number one starts with those divine qualities, and then second verse, third verse, these 26 qualities are enlisted, enumerated very nicely. We will go through those. But here is the interesting point. Uh, only three verses talk about the divine qualities. But there are four to eight verses, four, five, six, eight, four verses. And there are 10 to 20 verses. So there, if you add them up, there are almost 17 verses they talk about the demonic qualities. Uh, so the question, the flag, the red flag can raise in our minds that how come, uh, you know, generally we want to talk more about the good qualities, but Lord has given those good qualities in other chapters as well. Yeah, chapter 13, chapter 12, uh, uh, 18 chapter we'll talk about but many chapters talk about the divine qualities uh, of of the living entity so this chapter it's like more essence is on the demonic side the bad qualities of the living entities so it has 17 verses um this these okay not working fine activities of the demonic people uh, and and the, th the th third section is the activities of the demonic people and the consequences, how they act. The third section talks about how demonic people act, how they behave, how they feel, what their attitude is, up to what their destination is. And then uh, the last section covers 21 to 24, giving up demonic tendency and following scriptures. Uh, so let's start with the divine sampada, divine quality. So these are 26 I have given here. Uh, on each slide, you will see some of those. We can read some, uh, but respecting the time, um, I'll read very quickly. So first is fearlessness. Purity of consciousness, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, sacrifice. And if you notice, some of them have, uh, they're for like charity for grishtas. Mm -hmm. So we can speak a little bit on that. It, 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 because charity for sannyasi or brahmacharis, because they don't have much to give to. Uh, but grishtas earn, and they take, mm, they, they take care of the brahmachari and one person, and all the other three ashrams. Therefore, charity is highly recommended for the grishtas. Dhanam. Hmm? Uh, for example, abhiyam, fearlessness, it's, it's more inclined for sannyasis because they move, move alone in the jungle, in the forest, in the caves, uh, in, in the world. They always depend on Krishna's arrangement, Krishna's mercy. Uh, if they get some food today or tomorrow, they may not get another day. Uh, that's 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 what sadhus are. The sadhus mean they go around and they they don't they don't ask you know give me this particular item or the, 
they get what they can get. Uh, so like that. But charity for Grishtas is, is something we can touch upon quickly. Um, it's charity with the donations. Yes, we earn something. So therefore, we must give something from our hard work that we put into working and making uh, money. We give to the temple, we give to devotees, we help, we help with books, we help with prasadam, we help with distributing the holy names, the Sankirtan movement. Uh, we can help some needy you know, relatives and people and guide them in Krishna consciousness. Um, so by, by giving, we purify ourselves. Uh, we develop austerity. So that's charity, that's quality, that's a divine quality Krishna considers in this particular chapter. And then more, let's read more. For example, Vedic study for brahmacharis, that doesn't mean others don't study other ashrams, but especially for brahmacharis, their age in between, you know, eight, nine through 20th, it's very good time to study austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, uh, even in provocation. In many times, situations provoked us. You know, somebody behave with us in such a way. Somebody say something that's provoking. Uh, therefore, we justify our anger. Uh, but akrodas means freedom from anger, uh, even in provocations. We read more. Renunciation which means using things in Krishna service, tranquility, again, peacefully equipoised, aversion, compassion following, and the freedom from gentleness, modesty, steady determination. These are 20 and then six more. Vigor, protecting the needy, especially for kshatriyas. Um, if, um, if some weak person needs help to be protected, either from the, the unscrupulous elements or somebody is trying to cheat, we, we, we must help. Forgiveness, uh, fortitude, cleanliness, internal and external. Some, most of the time, cleanliness, we understand it's external. You know, we, we keep our hair nice and nails cut and shaved and nice dhoti kurta telak. So that's external. But then this saucham has also a lot to do with internal cleanliness. Yeah, what we eat, what we, how we think, how we move. Arjuna asked in second chapter, Krishna, please explain how your devotee, this stit pragya, how he walks, how he talks how he moves, how he thinks. So it's internal also, cleanliness. Yeah. Then we can read the last one, freedom from enemy and freedom from the passion for honor. Respecting others. Nati manita. From the passion for honor. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's one quality we can talk. Also, Mm. Mm. It's a uh, one second. My mouse is not okay. Uh, From the passion for honor, we we can hear the story from um, Indra Maharaj. Indra is a devotee. Indra is a demigod. He is very close associates to the Lord, doing um, tons and tons of services on behalf of Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu. Uh, but he 
um, from the passion of honor, we see he's, uh, he's looking for an honor. When we see his pastimes, uh, Indra uh, going and uh, asking the Brajavasis to honor him with Indra Puja. And when they, uh, when they don't do that in their puja, he's very upset. So he's in a kroda. Uh, he can justify that it's a provoking situation. So I, I can become angry because they've been worshiping me for centuries and today they have stopped worshiping me. Uh, that's my honor to accept their worship. And now today they're not worshiping. Therefore, so it's a provoking for him. Uh, so he gets angry. But it's here, 26th quality. Uh, there is a passion for honor. He's not happy that if he's not getting worship um, this particular year. Uh, so we must be very careful. In our own way, we all also... Um, we are instructed to follow this quality, and we 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 sometimes um, 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 not able to carry. We we do f find ourselves in many situations when we want to be honored. Otherwise, we become either angry or we become indifferent. We leave the scene. We don't go. They to that particular program or to that particular situation or to that particular seva because we are not being honored. So we have to be very careful. So these are 26 divine qualities. Let's also look at six demonic qualities that's mentioned in this chapter. Uh, asuric are demonic qualities. Now, those divine qualities were in mode of goodness. So that's one thing for all of us to always meditate how we can stay in mode of goodness. It's a difficult challenge. Uh, being surrounded by so many passionate people and situations and environments and what we eat, what we smell, what we see, it's all in passion. So it's very difficult to be in mode of goodness. But those 26 qualities are in mode of goodness. So here, Asuric, demonic uh, people, uh, these are the six qualities they, uh, they carry. First is Dambo. So it's Dambo, Darpa, Vimanascha, Krodha, Paurushyam, Evacha, Agyana, Chavi, Jatasya, Partha, Sampadam, Asurim. Asurim is demonic. So Dambo is the pride arrogance and conceit. So these three in one line, it's very, it, 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 it's, it's something um, for us to meditate on that how Lord is pointing these three qualities. So pride is what to make a show of religion, want to make a show of religion even if sinful. Mm -hmm. um, this person may or may not have any quality uh, to be a religious person is actually committing so many sins, but they're behind the scene. Nobody's seeing those sins, and he's showing himself to a religious person. So that's a pride that comes, that mentality comes because of the pride. And that pride turns into an arrogance even deeper when one's pride is one's wealth and education. Somebody become PhD and you, if you start having a conversation with a PhD person, it's generally very difficult, very challenging because it, it, it never ends. PhD person will, because he has a, he has a pride in his education that I can, I can, I can go on in logic. I can defeat people. I can. I can challenge people like, I have another challenge, I have another challenge. That comes from an arrogance. 
And then that where arrogance also becomes deeper, it goes into, it becomes conceit, desire to be worshipped by others. So we, uh, we, we, um, again, we seek honor, we seek respect to such a level, to such a deep level that we want to be worshipped by other people. So these are three first demonic qualities and then Prodha, Parusha, Mevacha, anger, harshness, ignorance, ignorance means lack of discrimination, uh, whimsical action. These qualities belong to those of demonic nature. So these are six here. And then we go, let's read something from Srila Prabhupada. It says, in this verse, the royal road to hell is described. I don't know, somebody, anybody else is here who is also, who would like to read, make it a little bit interactive. Can somebody come on a video call? So I have some partner here. Yes, Prabhu. Ah, Rivo, who is there? Das. Das. Richard, Prabhu, would you like to read uh, some of this? Unmute yourself, please read. Richard Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu, now I'm unmuted. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. okay. So, uh, for it, Asura Sampada, demonic uh, qualities. In this verse, the royal road to hell is described. The demoniac want to make a show of religion and advancement in spiritual science, although they do not follow the principles. One, they are always arrogant or proud in possessing some type of education or so much wealth. Two, they desire to be worshipped by others and demand respectability, although they do not command respect. Three, over trifles, they become very angry and speak harshly, not gently. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in more layman world, this wealth issue, you know, how mm, people who become wealthy, countries who become wealthy, the communities who become wealthy, how they become proud. Mm. How they then feel that everybody else should be subordinate should worship them. That's, that's what it means. Eh? Uh, Damba darpo abhimanascha. Uh, and we see very stark example, you know, especially in India when India was say golden age and then these Mughals came and the British came and they ruled like five, six hundred years. They looted India from all different angles, all different angles, culturally, wealth-wise, our philosophy, our Vedic knowledge, they tried to destroy it. When Srila Prabhupada was in, um, in London, he was approached by a reporter. He said, why, Swami, what, what are you doing here? Why you have left your country and come here? We have our own Christian preachers. Um, so there is no need of, you know, more. So Prabhupada said, yes, yes. I, I came because British came and looted us for many years, but they forgot to loot one thing, and that's the knowledge from Bhagavad Gita. So I have come with a gift of Bhagavad Gita to give to the British that they forgot to loot from India. So the wealthy countries, um, um, either it was a Skandar the Great or today it's Russia against Ukraine and China against India. And one friend sent me just a video that some Russia has some missile targeting towards Japan. They're trying to 
find some small little area where I don't know even people live in Japan, Russia wants to have uh, to, to, to have their own takeover. Uh, so it's this, it, 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 I mean, you and no or whatever, they are trying to figure it out, but they can't figure it out because this demonic mentality of Dumbo, Darpa, Vimanascha, having wealth and looking for people to worship you because you are wealthy, you're strong, you're powerful, is rooted in this demonic mentality. Srila uh, Popa writes nicely. Let's read. Uh, and then Lord Krishna mentions to Arjun uh, because what happened in verse 4 we saw those six demonic qualities Lord mentions to Arjun and then Arjun kind of became a bit worried thinking that I'm supposed to fight I'm supposed to fight with the Kauravas does that fit into uh, a demonic mentality or divine quality? Divine quality or demonic quality? Uh, is that asuric or suric? He's, he's worried. Uh, so Lord Krishna sitting as a super soul in Arjuna's heart, he realized that my devotee is worried. So here is the beautiful word, he, and he used the word same word that he used in chapter 18, Ma Sucha, and the third line, he says, Ma Sucha Sampadam Daivam Abhijato Asi Pandava. Hey, Pandava, hey Arjun, you are, don't worry, Ma Sucha Sampadam Daivam Abhijato. Abhijato means born, you are born with what? Daivam Sampadam. Daivam Sampadam means divine qualities. And then it says, Devi Sampadabhi Moksha. I think we have a translation. No, we don't have a translation. Devi Sampadabhi Moksha I means the divine qualities will liberate you, will unbind you. But Nabandhanti Asuri Mata, the Asuri, the, the demonic qualities will bind you to this world. Uh, so that's it, uh, verse 5. And then we see, I'm going to go through a few of these verses to make it easy. Uh, seventh, they do not know what is to be done. So these are now a bit more about the demonic qualities. Remember that 10 to 20 verses, uh, starting from 4 to 8 also. Uh, so demonic people, they, they, they're bewildered, they're proud, uh, they have a abhiman. They are angry, they are harsh because they are ignorant. Because of the ignorance part, especially, they do not know what is to be done and what not to be done. They don't have cleanliness, good behavior, truthfulness. Their conclusions about the world is false. They think this world is a satyam, without foundation, a pratishtam, that it has no foundation. They, so they don't feel like Lord Brahmaji role is there, Lord Vishnu role is there, Lord Krishna role is there. It has without foundation. There's no God in control, has risen without cause, produced of sex, desire, or lust. This is what they believe, the demonic people. And more, thus they are lost to themselves and have no intelligence. They engage in unbeneficial, horrible works. Ugra karma, the word used is ug karma, ugra karma. Ugra karma means horrible works. Work that's tinged with the mode of passion and ignorance that has crowd and anger and lust and greed. Those are called ugra karmas. Definitely killing animals and taking over countries and looting people and stealing and these clubs and pubs and bad videos and porn. All these are ugr karmas. Either 
we are we subject ourselves to all these to hear and listen and understand or we get an all first hand doing these activities these are ugar karmas um, so these are also part of the demoniac mentality these qualities uh, make demoniac people to perform ugar karmas so some of these here is chalapopa rice um Rikshar Prabhu, anybody else would like to read? I'll keep reading if you can come online. The demoniac concludes that the world is a penta smurgia. There is no controller, no purpose. Everything is unreal. They say this cosmic manifestation is rising due to chance, material actions and reactions. They do not think that the world was created by God for a certain purpose. They have their own theory. The world has come about in its own way, and there is no reason to believe there is God behind it. The materialists who have no concept of God think that they are advancing, but according to Bhagavad Gita, they are unintelligent and devoid of all sense. Materialistic inventions are considered to be advancements of human civilizations, but the result is that people grow more and more violent and more and more cruel, cruel to animals and cruel to other human beings. So we talked about that, um, having these millions of slaughterhouses all over the world, um, um, cruel to animals, um, and cruel to other human beings. We can see in these wars how many people are dying. Um, it's just unbelievable. Um, uh, the demoniac mentality. Uh, yes, Imanjaganathu, you want to read? The demoniac mentality. Accepting non permanent things, such demoniac people create their own God, create their own hymns, and chant accordingly. The word Asuchi Vrata, unclean vows, is very significant in this connection. Such demoniac people are only attracted by wine, women, Gambling and meat eating. Yeah, here is you know breaking the four regulatory principles: uh, no meat eating, no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication. All four things happen um, every day, all day, especially all night. Uh, these are in unclean vows. These, this is a demonic mentality, and it's going on all over the world. Um, Every town, actually, in any country, small village, it's going on. Sometimes we used to feel that, oh, this is something in Bombay. This is something in New York. This is something in LA. But no, no, it's Edison. It's Matachan. It's, um, it's, it's Plainfield. It's in every single town this is happening. And unfortunately, every single house even more unfortunate in everyone's heart, this is happening. These four rules and regulations are getting broken. Um, Whatever we used to see in brick and mortar, you know, in towns, villages, in, in cities, something, some nasty stuff used to happen in a in one building in the whole town, and bad people will go there. Uh, but today, on everybody's phone, all those four things are happening uh, without any shame. It's on. It's mounted on the screens of the digital media. That's right, you know, at the hand of six, seven-year-old child. This wine woman gambling and meat eating is happening. So we can see where the world is moving. Um, One hundred percent demoniac mentality. Um, it's manifesting and it's subject. We are subjected to. That's the dangerous part. That's when in Juhu Temple, when Srila Prabhupada was praying to 
rather rasly hari for a long time and then believe you that maharaj asked chala popa popa what you were praying for he said i was praying for that krishna please protect me from maya devi this is chala popa's humility he is protected um, for a lot times to come his pure devotion and dedication to krishna consciousness and preaching but chala popa was sharing with gijar maharaj what's our position uh, we must be praying to krishna all the time so this is something uh, the demoniac person feel remember i was i was talking about how he feels how he thinks that's in the third section these are the thoughts he is saying these are the verses we don't have time to chant the verses krishna and say 24 already so much wealth do i have today and i will gain more according to my scheme so much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more bhavishyati punardhanam more and more punardhanam uh then he's saying he's my enemy and i have killed him this is very stark example what's happening right now with the with russia ukraine and all these countries and my other enemies will also be killed i'm the lord of everything ishuru aham aham bhogi siddho aham balavan sukhi i'm perfect powerful and happy this is what demonic person feels i'm perfect siddho aham balavan powerful and sukhi happy now he says i'm wealthy and high born who is equal to me ko anyo asti strishyam i shall perform sacrifices give charity and rejoice in this way such persons are deluded by ignorance so here something notice i shall perform sacrifice give charity and rejoice so demonic person also thinks like that that i whatever again i will give something back and then i'll give charity and i'll perform sacrifices kansa perform sacrifices ravana perform sacrifices um um it, and they give charities but they all sacrifices the they perform charities given they were done in the mode of passion and ignorance and they rejoiced in their own way such persons are deluded by ignorance here is example of our dear friend ravana although the demonic person sees other equally rich and influential he thinks that no one is richer than he this is ravana he never wanted an advice of bhavishna um they will manufacture their own process of yagya and prepare some machines by which they will be able these are these are purports from shri prabhupad the best example such a demonic man was ravana a demonic person believes in the strength of personal work that i can do this 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 and then what's the destination of demonic person uh, bound by network of illusion they become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down into hell patanti narke asuchu here is sanskrit word moha jala is very significant jala means net like fish caught in a net they have no way come out and krishna how krishna treat these demonic people those who are envious and mischievous who are the lowest i perpetually cast into ocean of material existence into various demonic species of life that's what they deserve they get krishna's treatment amongst the species of demonic life attaining repeated birth oh per such person oh son of kunti can never approach me mudha janmani janmani they attain repeated birth mam aprapev kamtya de can never approach me gradually they sink down to the most abominable type of existence this is the last topic of this chapter it's called three gates of hell three gates to hell a uh, very important section so we will spend another 3 4 minutes krishna says trividham narkasyadam dwaram nashanam atmanah three types of hell trividham 
narkasi them in hell dwaram is a gate so they degrade what they do nashanam atmana the self they degrade the self and what are those three gates kama krodas tatha lobas desire anger and greed krishna recommends therefore one should give up these three tasmad etat trayam tyajit these are the three gates these are the three gates to hell kama kroda loba some more graphics picture uh this is sila popa rights we can even move on here is kama one cannot live without desires so we have desires but develop discrimination between good and bad desires cultivate good desires and give up bad desires and that's only possible in good association so desire is always there um we can look at the second one anger general cause of anger is unfulfilled desires and expectations we we we, we remember we it reminds uh, this desires and anger how unfulfilled desire the example of daksha prajapati daksha prajapati is is assigned this very very responsible position to create progeny my lord brahma ji uh, but because he becomes proud of his position his desire is to expect respect from everybody his desire is to expect worship from everybody so we see in that example then that when that desire is not fulfilled by lord shiva lord shiva in that assembly of daksha prajapati he does not stand up because lord shiva is in meditation he is mahadev devon ke dev mahadev um, and then daksha prajapati with his unfulfilled desires of getting worship by lord shiva he becomes angry so unfulfilled desires expectations bring anger similarly in our different sevas in the temple at home in the family uh, we have expectations and desires from our other devotee friends and family members and when those desires or expectations are not met we become angry but here krishna is saying that's one gate to hell and the first kama was one this is the second anger is the second gate to hell and third is the greed a devotee is not greedy for material wealth fame it's a devotee is greedy for service to krishna uh, like durjodhan was greedy for his wealth he was ready to bound krishna when krishna came as a peacemaker you can see his greed um, that how how low he can go even though he knew that krishna is supreme person even then because of his greed he he lost his composure and is trying to bind krishna krishna showed him his virat roop uh, but these all three are connected the lust anger and greed the kama the lust generally means desire for sex but lust actually means intense desires to get anything either it's a iphone 14 or vacation to hawaii or what not it's all lust some form of lust so lust greed and anger these are three gate to hell um, here is daksha prajapati getting his head cut by lord shiva's devotees disrespectful towards respectable people in anger one forgets everything becomes disrespectful and then 
Krishna says, one who has escaped these three modes, these three, three gates to hell, lust, anger, and greed, by understanding the Shastras. Uh, o son of Kunti, the man who has escaped these three gates of hell performs acts conducive to self-realization and thus gradually attains the supreme destination. Tato yati param gatim. Tato yati param gatim. Param gatim. He who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. Na sukham na param gatim. Those who discard scriptural injunctions, those demoniac mentality people who have their own scriptures, who have their own ideas, who have their own gurus, who have their own disciples also. Vedavata uh, Ratha. It's explained in uh, Isha Upanishad. Those are Vedavata Ratha. They think they know the Vedas, but they don't. They presume they know, but they don't. Those are the demonic mentality people. They do not get happiness here or supreme destination. And uh, this is also something from the purport. And those who follow the scriptures, one should understand what is they. They understand what to do, what not to do, what is duty and what is not. Knowing these regulations of scriptures, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. Karya akarya vavasthu. Karya akarya. Karya mean second line you read. Karya mean what to do. Akarya mean what not to do. So those who follow the scriptural injunctions from Bhagavad Gita, from Sri Madhav Bhagavatam, from Sri. Ramayana, Mahabharat, they know what to do, what not to do. Here we end this card. We end our conversation. It's 8.35. I am sorry for I'm always on slow, so thank you so much. I don't know if we have time for discussion, but Kishanan Prabhu, you please guide us what to do next. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamal, for the wonderful narration, explanation, and detailed study. I think in the interest of time, I would say let's conclude, but uh, we can take one question at the best. So you can unmute yourself and ask if anyone has questions, one question. Looks like uh, everybody is good. No one has questions. Looks like. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Tandot Pranam. Thank you so much for uh, this wonderful class. And uh, I was just uh, meditating one thing, Prabhu, when you were talking about meat eating. And um, Gorang Prabhu gave a class on Siddha Bakul Dham in Haridas Thakur uh, Baitak in Jagannath Puri in 2018 Yatra. He said there are 14% of the world population are vegetarians. That means 86% of world's population are relying on meat as their diet. So uh, even if we are uh, uh, maybe minority in that sense, but we have a great uh, challenge in our hands for our preaching, and uh, and uh, more they become it becomes stronger in our thought process in trying to foster the regulation. So uh, the so the in the Krishna consciousness uh, uh, that diet being a very prominent thing, and you touched on that very clearly in the middle part of your lecture. Uh, and uh, and and that is where uh, once we realize the internals of uh, the non-vegetarian and the violence, and we take it to our hearts, I think we become more uh, kind. That doesn't mean the vegetarians are not cruel, 
but at least from the aspect of uh, the basic uh, premise, uh, I think we are uh, saving a lot of souls because life comes from life. And I just wanted to add this, uh, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful comment. Yeah, I, uh, I think there is a great opportunity. Also, there is a challenge that 86% are meat eaters, but that also means there's a great opportunity for all of us to reach out. Uh, I'm personally supremely happy and, and grateful to the vegan movement. Vegan movement has changed the face of this earth. Uh, you can go to Thailand, you can go to Puerto Rico, you can go to Colombia, you can go to Hawaii, wherever you want to go, you will find vegan restaurants. Uh, yeah, they're not doing for spiritual religion, whatever, 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 but it's a great beginning. I have so much hope. Uh, so I'm so happy. I'm very positive. I think there is a lot, lot's going to happen in the next 10, 20 years. Things will change big time in our favor. Um, so that, that's it, it's good news. Many cows are getting, uh, getting saved by the vegan movement. So that's a, that's a very good news. Thank you, Amanyaka Prabhu. Anybody else? Yes. Amartanda Prabhu has something to say. But, uh, but the whole regulator principle comes only after conviction. And conviction comes after the person whom you have connected with appreciates your character. And he puts value on whatever you say. So it is not necessary for a person to be vegetarian or a meat eater to come to Krishna consciousness from the outreach effort. So it doesn't matter whether a person is a meat eater or a vegan or a vegetarian or whatever, or a Jain, it doesn't matter. So all these regulative principles come after the person is convinced. So it's something like putting the cart in front of the horse. You can't expect, I mean, it won't be possible to be impossible rather. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, the world is predominantly a meat eater. And I see it has no bearing on outreach. That's my yeah. question. Uh, good good uh, way to look at it. Um, yeah, our charyas are, you know, Especially Shila Prabhupada was very adamant about the slaughterhouses, meat eaters. He picked them up from the body of New York City. Uh, but whoever he picked them up, he wanted them to be the ambassador of no meat eating. But that uh, comes later. At, at, that came at, later, Prabhu. He no, no, let, me, them let me finish. Let me finish. I'm not finished, Hari Bol. So at one point, he came to know that, you know, some people, our devotees are trying to approach and they are meat eaters and it's becoming difficult in, you know, uh, they're not, they have difficulty letting go the meat eating part. So Chalapapa even mentioned this much that if they, have difficulty, at least cow killing must be stopped immediately. They can eat fish, but no cow killing. Um, and at some point, I believe, if, if we go to Veda base, many places mentioned that just to become human being, just to come to the platform of human being, uh, meat eating has to be given up. So, yes, slow process 
can take time, it can take convincing, it, it takes surrender, it takes preaching, uh, agree. Um, but the foundation is there that we want to go with. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. Yeah, Prabhus. I think thank you very much, everyone. We have to conclude 8.43. We so, conclude now. Yes. Yes. Okay. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. All glory to all of us. Join. Vanchal Kulpatra Bhastya. Vanchal Kulpatra Bhastya. Thank you, everybody. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.